Good day, everyone. Welcome to another class on English language. This class is sponsored by O3 Schools Jump App, an app designed for students about to sit for jump examination. It will help you prepare adequately and get that score that you really desire easily. So the app is available for download in Play Store. You download and you activate for 2,500 Naira and you get access to all the features they have, they have us to offer. So today we're going to be looking at prepositions. Prepositions. Prepositions are parts of speech. It's one of the parts of speech we have in English language. So prepositions are words that establish relationship between words in a sentence. Let's say a preposition is a word that shows relationship between words in sentences. They have to link the words that form sentences. These words could be nouns, pronouns, other parts of speech. Prepositions establish or shows a connection between the words in a sentence. A good example, the book is on the table. The book is on, as a preposition there, is on the table. The book, the table, those are nouns. On there is letting you know the relationship between the book and the table, which is what's on top of it. The book is on the table. That's a preposition establishing relationship between the words in sentences. And in this sentence, the words are nouns. You can also have, let's say, that gift. That gift is for him. Okay, we have another part of speech, which is pronouns now and a noun. So prepositions link nouns, pronouns, other parts of speech. When, when we use prepositions, we have to be really careful because prepositions can change the meaning of sentences. And sometimes they, they can also be used to mean different things. One preposition can mean two different things or three depending on your meaning or the way they are used in sentences. So let's look at this, for example. That gift is for him. You have for here, the preposition. What this tells us is that him here is the owner of the gift. By the time you now change this preposition, let's say it becomes that gift is from him. From is also a preposition. The sentence has changed entirely in meaning. That gift is for him. This is the owner of the gift. Or that gift is from him. Him becomes the giver. No more the owner or the receiver of the gift. So prepositions can change the meaning of sentences. And then, like I said, they can also be used to mean different things. For example, the prize was awarded... At the office, at the preposition here, the prize was awarded to the office. Preposition here is to. So this sentence now means entirely different things. At here means something else, to means something else. The prize was awarded at the office means the location where the prize awarding took place was the office. When you answer the prize was awarded to the office means the office received the prize. Therefore, prepositions that can be used to mean different things. If I say, I stood behind him. I stood behind him. Behind is a preposition. Here, it simply means I was standing at the back behind the person standing at the back or if you now say the team members were behind the project
in this sentence behind now has another meaning entirely it doesn't mean that the team members were standing at the back of the project no what it tells us is that the team members support the project or they are for the project so this the same preposition were used differently in sentences Prepositions can change the meaning of sentences and they can also change their meaning depending on the way they were used in sentences. Other common prepositions we have include on, in, for, from, at, to, behind, before, after, unless, since. All these are common examples of prepositions. Let's quickly run through the types of prepositions that we have. First off, we have prepositions of time. Types of prepositions, so we're about to look at now. Let's just add it here. So, types of prepositions, and I said one prepositions of time. These prepositions help to establish relationship relating to time around the time an action is carried out or around the time something is done. These prepositions help to establish such relationship. And good examples we have at, in, on, before, after, during, until, since, for. All these are examples of prepositions of time. These prepositions, like I said, they establish relationship of time so we can say i was born in may in prepositions relating to time may is a month of the year relating to time or you can say she had her lunch during break Because of that preposition there during, if you know the time the break is, you already know the time that she ate the lunch. So these prepositions establish relationship of time. Then very quickly look at the difference between since and for. We use since when the time is specific. If you are specific about the time, for example, I have been waiting, or let's not repeat I, let's say. We have been walking since 3 p.m. The time is specific there, so you use since. We have been walking since 3 p.m. or we have been walking since Monday. If it's a specific time, we have been working on that project since June. These are specific times. We use since but well, if you're not talking of duration not the specific time that's when we go for four if we are to use four in this sentence it becomes we have been walking for three hours so if now comes to duration this one specific time This on duration. Duration could be hours, days, months, years. We use four for duration. We have been working for three hours. We have been working for three months. We have been on it for three years. If you have to, if you have to do with duration of time, we use the preposition for. But if the time is specific, you want to be specific about the time. You go for since, since three p.m. since Monday, since morning since noon those are specific times that the difference between since and for let's right, if you look at the next preposition prepositions of place prepositions of place establish location or relationship about location those are that's what prepositions of place helps with about the location of things or less than an object. So examples we have under, over, inside, 
these are common examples of prepositions of place or place prepositions under over inside between outside above between outside above let's mention as many as it can below around behind around these are examples of place prepositions we also have on and in we'll look at the difference between that on and in let's just add the things we look at the difference between so these are common examples of place prepositions if you say tade lives behind the school When you get to the school, you know the location to go to if you want to get to Tade's house. Behind simply means at the back. So you go to, you go behind, then you'll be able to locate Tade's house from there. Or the dog is under the desk. The preposition there is. That's a place preposition too telling you the location of the deck of the dog i mean so you have to look under the desk to check for the dog let's put it that way so these are examples of place place prepositions then i said the difference between on and in we use on when what you're talking about has a specific surface then in is for boundaries when it has boundaries you now use in the example we used before the book is on the table. On. The table has a surface. The book is on it. But when you now want to use in, Mary is in France. Oh, sorry. For something with boundaries on objects with surface with surfaces then front uh, in rather objects with boundaries so that's the difference between on and in when you use them as place prepositions remember we already mentioned them as prepositions of time like i said prepositions their meaning change depending on the way they are used in sentences so we've mentioned them before as prepositions of time now we are saying they're also place prepositions but then when you want to use them the difference is in objects with surfaces you use on then the ones with boundaries we use in that's for place prepositions then prepositions of direction other type of preposition prepositions of direction this one describes the direction to which something moves or travels prepositions or direction points you in the direction to which something moves or travels and prepositions of direction we have toward through towards across inside uh, sorry of down up let's look at others over past onto from these are common examples of prepositions of direction pointing us to the direction in which something moves or travels so an example we have 
she went up the stairs. Up, you can either go up or go down the stairs. So up here is pointing you in the direction she went up. Then the bullet went through the door. Tells you that the bullet was past the door and entered through. That's the preposition there. Through prepositions of direction. He swam across the lake. You know the direction that he was. He swam across the lake. Those are types of prepositions that we have. So then we have the bullet went through the door. He swam across the lake. Across here is the preposition of direction in this sentence. All these are common examples. Then that those are types of prepositions, prepositions of place, of time, and of direction. So for prepositions, some prepositions combine with nouns or verbs to form phrases that have entirely different meaning. For example, we can have prefer to. So is a preposition. Prefer is the verb. Charge with. Relate to. Relate to. Admit to. There are very many. Kick against. Frown at all these like on the line the prepositions there. Frown at pull over at hand. Shout out. Put off. So some prepositions can combine with nouns or verbs to form phrases that we can use in sentences, but then it will no longer mean the same as when you use the preposition alone. It will now have a different meaning. For example, kick against means you do not support it. Not necessarily that you are kicking against something or you are actually kicking something. So just to kick against can mean to not support. You are not for it. That could be kick against. That's what we're looking at for today, prepositions. We've defined prepositions, given common examples, and then we we'll look at the types of prepositions, as well as some prepositions that combine with verbs or nouns to mean something different. So let's quickly answer some questions on prepositions. Questions. The first one we have here is she is such a gossip. I keep her dash arms linked. A N B I C at D with. She's such a gossip. I keep her dash arms length. So our answer becomes at arms length. At arms length is like an idiom. So at is already like fixed with that. At arms length. That means you keep her at a distance. You try to distance yourself. My children always go to school. Dash bus. A in. B on. 
okay in a c by d by a my children always go to school dash bus the correct proposition to use there is by bus that's the correct proposition to use not on bus or in a bus you can say on foot not by foot then so it becomes by bus by train we use by that this proposition for those means of movement then chidi voted dash the party's chairman a you have wheat b against c on d over like i said some prepositions combined with nouns or verbs to form phrases that mean something else so chili voted you can have voted for or voted against we do not have four in the options our answer becomes against that means the party chairman did not get chili's vote so we don't have voted with or voted on voted over the party's chairman if you use any of those prepositions that will be wrong and your sentence the meaning would be quite different nigeria's first military administration came to power dash 15th january 1966 option a we have a b by c at d on nigeria's first military administration came into power dash 15 january 1966 we have on preposition of time so since the date they give us is specific 15th january we use in well they are just said 1966 and in would have been there I'm sorry we use on if they are just said 1966 without this specific date our answer could have been in nigeria's first military administration came to power in 1966 or in January 1966. But since the specific date is stated, we use on. Um, another question. His behavior at school. Resulted. Dash he's been expelled. His behavior at school resulted dash he's been expelled. A in B to C at D from. His behavior at school resulted dash he's been expelled. Resulted in he's been expelled, not resulted to, as many of you might think is. The answer resulted to anything else, but the correct preposition we use with resulted is resulted in some prepositions combined with nouns or verbs to form phrases that already have what set meaning. So here we have resulted in. It could also have resulted from, but that won't work in this scenario. So not resulted to or resulted at, but resulted in his being expelled. Another question we have. It is an act of indiscipline. To renege dash one's promise. A wheat. B at c4 d on it is an act of indiscipline 
to renege on one's promise. We use renege on. That means it's an act of indiscipline to go back on your promise. If you have made that promise, you should fulfill it. So if you if you want to, if you don't want to fulfill it, you say you are reneging on your promise. The preposition, the appropriate preposition to use there is on. So let's see see further questions. Having decided dash. Going with them. I stayed in those. Options we have A4. B two, C against, D without. Having decided dash going with them, I stayed indoors. I stayed indoors. That tells us that the, the person didn't go with them. So that tells us that the preposition, right preposition to use becomes against. Having decided against going with them means you have decided you will not go. Having decided against. Next, we have we arrived. Just dash time. For the formal opening. A in B after C before D at we arrive just dash time for the formal opening. We arrive just in time for the formal opening. The opening hadn't started when you got there, so you arrive just in time with little time to spare. We arrived just in time for the formal opening. He had rounded dash. His lecture. Before the student arrived. Up, B in, C off, D out. He had rounded dash his lecture before the student arrived. What this sentence means is that the lecture had stopped before the student arrived. So the preposition that will most convey that is rounded off his lecture before the student arrived. You cannot have rounded up. Rounded up means to arrest. Or like in mathematics, it can mean to approximate to the nearest higher number. That's round up. But to finish is round off. So he had rounded off his lecture before the students arrived. Let's take note. Like I said, prepositions can be easy to misuse, especially because their meanings keep changing depending on their use. And some prepositions attached to nouns and verbs to get set meanings. So in order for us to easily answer questions like this, we should have them at our fingertips. O3 Schools Jump app will help you with that. So it's advisable you download the app and practice. There are more questions in the app that you can use to practice. We'll, run, we'll stop here for today. Thank you very much for watching.